Good morning, beautiful souls. I am here today to talk about the easiest ways to access the Akashic Record. I'm so excited to share this with you today. I recently had some interest in it, so I'm here to share it. Uh, so, I am going to show. There we go. All right, so I am Amanda Germain. I am a quantum energy healer and owner of Dragons by Lotus Healing. I help people heal themselves on all levels and transform their lives through intuitive energy healing, mindset, manifestation, releasing stuck emotions, and erasing limiting beliefs. So first thing I wanted to go over is do not overthink this. Uh, what we often find is that people just think it's like this big, intricate, complicated thing, and it's really not. Um, so let's just not make it a complicated thing. Let's just make it as simple as possible. Um, one thing I'd, I'd like to just mention, and I'm going to mention this later too, is that I know that some people can't go into their mind's eye and have visions or see pictures. Um, so I'm gonna I'm I'm going to give you a, a couple of different options if you aren't the kind of person that can see visions in their mind's eye. That is the easiest way to get into your Akashics. So um let's just go let's just go on. All right, so the first and absolute most important thing is to set an intention. And this is true for any kind of inner work or manifestation or magic. And really, as you're going through your day, it's even important to set intentions throughout your day. A lot of people will, including myself, will, um, a part of their morning routine is to set an intention for the day. And, you know, maybe your intention is, I just plan to be happy all day long. I, I plan to choose happiness all day long. And that could be, you know, as easy as that. That's your intention for the day. Your intention could be, I'm going to have amazing relationships all day long. That could be your intention. And so every time you meet with a person, every time you see a person, you act accordingly. So step one to access your Akashic records is to set the intention to access them. So simple as that, you just say, you know, I like to, I like to speak to the universe when I set an intention or to my higher self. So you can say something like, Hey, universe, I am setting the intention that I would like to um, access my Akashic record. You could also say, uh, just say something as simple as I'm accessing my Akashic record. I would like to access my Akashic record. I set the intention to access my Akashic record. Whatever it is that you want to say, you could also write it down. Some people find that to be more powerful. And then if you're looking for a set, a set of lifetimes, set that intention as well. For example, you could say, I set the intention to access all lifetimes having to do with doubting myself and not thinking I'm worthy. Now, a lot of times when we do Akashic Records work, we're actually looking to heal something, right? So if you find a theme in your life, like, for example, what I said below, that you're doubting yourself and not thinking that you're worthy, then you can pull forward all of the past lives having to do with that. And you can figure out kind of where the theme is coming from. And then you can sort of allow any of those lessons, any needed information to download into your body so that you can feel it. And then you can collapse those records, meaning that you kind of delete them, um, get rid of them because they're no longer needed. So yeah, it's kind of, um, it's similar to, if you've heard the term like healing your karma, it's similar to that. You're kind of, you're going through and you're, you know, um, you're saying like that, you're saying that you're sorry for anything that you've done and you're asking them if they will forgive you for anything that, um, that you have done. And this can be forgiving a person from a past life. It can be forgiving a being. It can be forgiving your past self for something as well. And I'm not going to go too much into how to heal with Akashics right now because this is all about just getting into your Akashics in the most simple way possible. So the next most important step is visualization. So there are 
several different ways you could do this. I do a, a specific kind of meditation to bring my clients into the Akashic. Um, and then we both go in together so that I can see, uh, I can see a lifetime and they can see a lifetime. And, you know, sometimes they don't see something and, some, and I, I always see something, but sometimes they don't. And so I, you know, I always tell them that's okay. That's not a problem. And then, um, I will bring forward what I saw. Now, if what I saw doesn't resonate with them, like if they're like, oh, I don't, that doesn't feel light to me. That doesn't feel right to me. Then I'll be like, okay, that's fine. It does not matter. We can just go back in and I can see another lifetime. Now, what may have happened is I could have either been seeing, sometimes it happens where I'm actually seeing one of my lifetimes, or I am seeing a, a lifetime that isn't exactly the one that they're looking for. And so then it just comes forward as something that's not right. So uh, this is this first visualization is just to figure out what your Akashic look like, because um, once you kind of have an idea of what they look like to you, then that part of it doesn't need to be a part of the visualization every time. So you already know what it looks like. So you can just kind of go in to that space and start to read your Akashic. So what I recommend you do is you sit in meditation. So sit, sit somewhere comfortable. It doesn't matter if you're cross-legged on the floor or laying in the bed or whatever, as long as you won't fall asleep. I like to sit in my recliner when I do this or, um, or in my office chair. My office chair is pretty comfortable. So sit in meditation and take a few breaths and imagine that you are opening a door. Inside the door, you see your Akashic record. So what does the room look like to you? It could be, it could look like a library. A lot of people see a library. It could be like space, like you're seeing just stars and all of the stars are your Akashic record. Um, it could be a hallway uh, with doors so that each room or each door that you open would be an Akashic record. It could be stars. It could be several orbs of light. It could even be a file cabinet. So whatever shows up to you is how your soul sees them and how you know them. So um, once you have figured that out, then you want to tap in to your Akashic records. So still staying in, so that once you know what it looks like, you can just access that space at any time. So um, my, my space looks like a library. So I'm going to close my eyes and I will go into my library and I will, um, I will basically set the intention to be shown a lifetime that will help me excel on my journey or will show me something that I need to feel. So um, and, and really, you can say whatever you want. Like, if you just want to see a lifetime just for fun, that's fine, too. Just whatever. If you're just exploring and playing around with it, that's perfectly fine. Whatever whatever reason you need to access the Akashic Records, just kind of state your reason and then close your eyes. And if, if, if they're already closed, and wait for the information to come in. So this is where I was talking about where um, usually for me, information comes in visually in my mind. So I can see visions of things. I can see pictures, movies playing, um, just all sorts of all sorts of visions is what I usually see. And I rarely will get like I will rarely get spoken to in my mind or anything like that. But some people will. So you just have to pay attention to whichever type you are. Maybe maybe you are the person that can see the visions in your mind, and that's great. If not, um, the option that I kind of give here is you could potentially pull some oracle cards while you're thinking of your Akashic. So you could say like, like pull out your favorite Oracle card or tarot deck and, and just say, um, I'm setting the intention to pull out some of my past life stories and then pull cards. Um, another thing that people have done in the past is they have said, I'm, I'm looking to get some information on a past life. Um, and they just say, you know, lead me to a book on my shelf and lead me to a page that will give me information about my past life. That's another way to do it. Um, so once you're shown a lifetime, um, and you know, I've had people have visions of like, just like a black space, like, um, I've had people have, have visions of just being like, uh, in like a dungeon, like it, it can be pretty much anything. Um, it will probably not be a galactic lifetime. So be wary of that. If something like that comes forward, the Akashics are all um, are all Earth lifetime. So to uh, 
sorry, once you are shown a lifetime, feel free to write down what you saw. So I feel like it's important to write it down because oftentimes if you're exploring several lifetimes at a time, you won't remember specific ones unless they were like, you know, really you, you, you see the vision and it like you have an emotional attachment to that vision. So I like to write them down, especially if I'm just kind of sitting in meditation and exploring several. Um, that way I can go back and if I need to heal something or learn something from that, I can do it later. Um, if you're just wanting to access one and then heal that first and then go on to the next one, then that's, that's fine. Then you don't really need to write it down. Um, you'll also find that once you start collapsing records or uh, healing records, that you will you won't be able to remember them as easily. Like they'll still be there, but your your mind just won't find them important, and so um, and your soul doesn't find them important anymore. So they they'll technically still be there somewhere in your memory block, but they won't uh, they won't really come forward as easily. All right. So as I talked about before, if you wanted to access a set of records. You set the intention of um, being shown all the lifetimes having to do with a specific feeling or topic. Close your eyes and let them all come forward. I will usually either see them in flashes of different scenes or sometimes even as several movies playing at once. Some people see them as several files or several books. The reason you would choose to do this is usually because you're looking to collapse those records, as I mentioned earlier. Um, which I will teach you about in another video about how to take all of your records from a certain healing or topic, um, healing, uh, healing those and forgiving yourself or the person that you still have like an emotional attachment to, and then, you know, letting go of all those records by right? deleting them slash collapsing them, whatever you want to do. So, um, I really like this part. So you can ask for more information. So let's say that you see a lifetime. I'll go, I'll tell you about one of my lifetimes. Um, let's say you see a lifetime where you're, uh, you're on your knees and you're kind of in like a colonial time. So wearing a dress and a bonnet and this man is pushing you down with his shoulders and you're kind of, your head is down and he's kind of got his, like he's got control over you. And you want to get more information about that because you're like, okay, that's really interesting. Um, you know, what does that mean? And so when I asked more information about this lifetime that I saw, I got that, you know, you're, you're feeling trapped. You have this feeling of being kept down. Um, you have a feeling of, you know, staying small and not wanting to like become big because you're being held down kind of thing. Um, so that was something that I could then work through. So like, you know, and the way that I received that information was that I started to hear, I'd started to hear the words. I started to see more of the vision sometimes. Um, this time I, I think it was both. I saw some of the vision and I heard words at the same time. Um, why am I being shown this record and what am I supposed to learn from this lifetime? So, you know, I think that the reason what I had learned from that lifetime was that I was playing small and I wasn't I wasn't wanting to like um, up level to get to a, a higher place in my my business and my life and so I, I had to heal and collapse those records um, I can still pull that record forward because it was kind of a traumatizing one um, and but I can't remember any of the other lifetimes that I pulled forward and collapsed within that same strain of of lifetime. So if the information doesn't come come right away, it might mean that it will come later and you may need to give it some time and have faith that the answers will come. So you could be going about your day and then suddenly get like some sort of realization, oh, that's what that was about. So your mind just might need some time to process everything um, and get caught up with your higher self and your soul. And so you might just need to give yourself a little bit of time to let those answers come through. Another option is, again, to pull cards. Um, you can use Oracle or uh, Tarot, like I said, and just pull like however many cards you want to get more information about that lifetime. And you would be surprised how right on the cards will be. Like you, um, I don't know if, if you've never pulled cards before, uh, but 
I would just, I'm just going to say, like, just make sure that you sort of spend a little bit of time meditating before you do it and just set the intention that you want to pull cards for more information on this lifetime. Give them a good shuffle and then pull, pull a few cards and see what comes up. Um, you might be pretty surprised what might come up about that lifetime. All right, so then the last thing is just to really have faith and know that it is actually a really simple process. Um, and like any ability or any new skill, it can take time and practice to get really good at it. So it might not come to you right away. Um, it depends on how strong that muscle is in you, like uh, how many times you've sort of meditated or gotten quiet or let information come to you. Uh, so it can take a little bit of time. Um, if you want somebody to help you, I do those kinds of sessions. You can reach out to me in the comments or you can reach me at dragonfly.lotus.healing at gmail.com and I can set you up with a session. Um, I also have a very good friend who does QHHT. Her name is Julia Wagner and she is amazing and she um, she does longer sessions. So they're a little bit more involved and intense and pretty amazing actually. And if you haven't heard of QHHT, look up Dolores Cannon. That's where the, that's where this came from. And it's pretty, um, it's pretty awesome. And honestly, if you are into past lives and you haven't read anything from Dolores Cannon, I highly, highly, highly recommend reading her books or, or listening to them. Listening to them is actually kind of cool. Um, you'll know why once you start listening. So keep faith and trust that what you're seeing is real. So the mo the hardest part about learning how to do anything um, with your with your mind's eye, um, any, any kind of psychic ability, is that we often want to doubt it. We often want to say, oh, that's not real. That can't be real. That's just me. That's just my thoughts. That's just my uh, my way of interpreting things. That's just my visions. My you know, Things are coming from my own life, and that's why this is coming up. Um, you know, what I found that occasionally that will happen where I'll have, you know, something that will come to, oh, that's just my thought. But then it turns out to not be my thought and it's actually for my client. And I, I'll say it to them like, oh my God, that was exactly what I needed to hear. So, um, you just have to remember that, like, you know, it's, it is a little bit easier when you have a client to verify that what you're saying is something that they needed to hear or something that, you know, is actually from their lives. But, you know, you just have to trust that what's coming through is for you and that you are pulling this information through, whether it seems like it's your thought or your vision or your dream or something like that or something from your life. It might actually be a message for you. So, you know, just keep that in mind as you do this work. Um, and I just want to state, you know, our imaginations have always been our greatest superpower, like forever. And most people don't even know this. I grew up with an overactive imagination. And I remember my dad apologizing to me one day because, you know, he felt like he had, I don't know, that my overactive imagination was causing me problems and anxiety and, and stuff like that. And not only was it not his fault that I had an overactive imagination, but uh, it was, it's actually become my, my favorite thing about myself. And I'm so happy that I have that power. So if you have a great imagination, embrace that for sure. So if you know, then you know what I believe to be the greatest secret to living an amazing life, right? So having an imagination is the greatest secret secret to living an amazing life. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this content or found it useful, I'd love to hear what you thought in the comments and it would be it would mean a lot if you would click the like button this video and click the su subscribe button so you won't miss any new videos. Thank you and have a wonderful day.